Hello. Today, I'm going to give you a short overview as well as a demo of Project Alvarium. Project Alvarium is seeking to be the newest at-large project within the LF Edge umbrella organization. And we'll talk a little bit about the problem space and what it's trying to solve. My name is Trevor Kahn. I am a technical staff engineer at Dell Technologies in the office of the CTO. I'm also a member of the LF Edge Technical Advisory Council, and I'm also a board member. And I am a founding member of the Project Alvarium. So to describe the Alvarium concepts, modern applications are extensively distributed. And we no longer think of data as residing in a single centralized silo. Data is originated at one part of the network and traverses that network, perhaps being mutated, filtered, et cetera, all along the way. What Alvarium seeks to do is to create metadata that attests to verifiable authority at the origin of data, but also through all those hops as it traverses the network, as well as any mutations that may occur. <clears throat> we do this by creating metadata, what we call trust insertion points, which I'll describe in a minute. And at each one of these insertion points, there are a series of factors that we can evaluate in order to determine that data is being created, modified, and handled in a way that conforms to best practices or policy. And each one of those factors can be independently weighted because some things are more important than others. The trust from these factors is then calculated by what we call the confidence score. So that confidence score then is an objective measurement of the level of trust that you can have in how the data was handled. And that trust score may be used for various scenarios like governing system behavior, sending out alerts for things that go wrong, notifications of possible attack, or even just applications that have been deployed and are misconfigured. So by trust insertion points, we mean the various hops that data goes through. Data which originates at the edge might just go straight to the cloud, but it might go through any number of hops in between on its way to its final resting place. It could go through gateways, regular compute that's stored in a data center, or perhaps on-prem, finally making its way to the cloud. Maybe it doesn't even go to the cloud. But at every single one of these hops, there will be applications that facilitate the business and which will consume the Alvarium SDK that allow us to capture the annotations that eventually roll up into the overall confidence score. So this is a simple example, just to illustrate the point. You see in the lower left-hand corner down here, we have some sensor data that's coming in. We don't really think of the Alvarium SDK residing directly on the sensor. It's more likely going to be on the gateway that the sensors are attached to. But if you have a rich compute device, there's no reason that it couldn't, like a camera or something like that. In any case, the gateway receives the sensor readings and through the SDK is able to annotate certain aspects of its environment relative to the creation of that data. Does the gateway have a TPM? Did the gateway go through secure boot? Are the individual readings that are being collected being put into a distributed ledger for immutability and tra traceability? The level of confidence at this point is simply yes or no. Is this criteria satisfied or not? So when we move to the next uh, hop, which is the edge server, there's also applications running there with uh, an SDK embedded in them. You may add on additional annotations related to encrypted communication. You know, was the data handed over TLS? Does the data have a signature on it that can be verified through public-private key pairs? And then finally, moving into the cloud, maybe we add another annotation on top of that that uses a hash or a checksum to determine whether or not the payloads have been tampered with. These annotations are stored in a separate data store from the business. So the business applications are writing their data to one place. The Alvarium annotations are being stored in another place. And that could be a distributed ledger. It could also be a database sitting on the other side of a pub sub. But if all of these were to pass, then numerically, we would have a score of six. 
But as I said before, if you want to independently weight some of these factors relative to others, then you'll want to think about that confidence score more as a percentage, because that will reflect certain things being more important. So the demo that I'm going to show you today essentially involves three different workstations. These are simulating the roles of a gateway, uh, a core compute node, and then a cloud compute node. And the data is going to originate over here at the gateway on workstation two. It's going to then move to workstation three, where it's going to be transformed. And then that transformed piece of data will, will be moved over to workstation four. Now, you can see at the top that workstations two and three, their business applications will be writing that data to a database, just like you would have a database under support, supporting any number of business applications. The annotations, on the other hand, are going to be written to an IOTA stream, and then there's going to be a subscriber that is looking at that stream, waiting for the annotations to come in, which will eventually calculate the score and persist that data into an Alvarium database. So you might be wondering, well, how can I relate the application data to the Alvarium data? And right now, we're looking at application data as a document. And so think of a sensor reading that comes in in JSON format. You can turn that into a hash very easily. And if all the players in this network understand that we're using, say, the SHA-256 algorithm to do hashing, then when I go to fetch records out of the application database, assuming they haven't been tampered with, I can hash those up using the SHA-256 algorithm and use that hash as the key to go find the annotations and the score in the Alvarian database. So that's how we link the two together. The other thing that I want to show you on here is that I've got these PKIES, TLS, no, TPM, no, and so on. This reflects the annotations that are going to be captured at each point of the process. So for workstation two, we're going to capture two of them, a PKI annotation, which says that the data going out has been signed, and the fact that there's no TPM. None of these, none of these boxes have TPMs on them. On workstation three, we have an extra annotator for TLS. So I've set up a simple REST endpoint with no TLS certificate. And so that's going to fail. But then when the data is passed to workstation four, there is a TLS certificate there. And so that one's going to succeed. So our philosophy in building annotators, and these are the only three we have right now. I'm sure that there will be more in the future. Our philosophy is that these should not be satisfied by virtue of a developer passing a Boolean flag into the annotator. The annotator should be written in such a way that it can capture information from the environment, from its context, that then allows it to say whether or not it meets the criteria. So on top of that, the actions that are going to be taken at each point, which I think I've already briefly touched on, but this will make it more explicit. The data is going to be created over here on the left, workstation two, that's the gateway. Then it's going to be passed to workstation three. That's going to result in a transit annotation. And then it's going to be mutated. It's going to be changed into something else. Then that mutated version is going to be handed off to workstation four. And we'll see another transit annotation over there. Okay, so that's basically the flow that we're going to go through. And I've set it up so that this is only going to execute once. Because if I just turn it on and let it rip, it's too much to keep track of for something like this. So this is somewhat contrived, but you, I think you'll see the point. All right, let's get into the demo. <clears throat> so you can see here, I've got workstation two, three, and four. I've also got my sort of personal workstation here, and that's what I'll eventually be running the, the dashboard on. But the very first thing I need to do is I need to stand up the IOTA Tangle. And the way I have this set up, I'm using uh, version 1.1.0 of the IOTA streams library in order to set, put the stream on top of the Hornet Tangle. And I have two nodes participating in the Tangle. One of them is a coordinator and one of them is just kind of a secondary. 
And then as part of the stream, there's going to be what we call the author console that's going to register that stream. And then all of the people that want to publish and subscribe are going to register themselves through that author console. It kind of ties the two ends of the pipe together. All right, so here goes, starting the coordinator. And now I will start the secondary. Oops. <clears throat> okay, so those are both up. And now I'm going to come down here and start the author. <clears throat> okay, so now I essentially have an address up and ready to go to be able to publish information on my stream. Now, the other thing I have to do is I have to start some applications that support the back end process, the subscription, the calculation, the uh, population across databases and so forth. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go do that now. Okay, so all that's up and running. Now we're ready to actually kick off our business applications that consume the Alvarium SDK. <clears throat> so I'm going to start Workstation 4 first. And it goes through this key load operation in order to connect to the stream provider. And here you can see it's connected successfully. Sometimes it has to try that a few times. So we may see some retries in here. Okay, provider connection successful. Now workstation two. Now, this is really this is really the trigger for the whole process. This this application is going to create the data. The other two are sitting over there. They haven't received anything yet, so they are not taking any action. But when I start this, <clears throat> then that will then start the whole chain of events running. All right, there's our message. So let's just see real quick if we can go over here and maybe capture one of these things. This doesn't always work out the way I want it to, but let's just go see. This is actually visualizing the tangle. I may have been too late. It looks like we're just getting milestones. Yeah, you, know, you can see here that the other applications have received their information. So I may have just been too late to actually capture those. Oh, well. Let's go look at the dashboard. Okay, so there's our two pieces of data. Remember, we created one and then we mutated it, right? So there's two pieces of data. And you can see they have two different confidence rankings, all right? Now, this is sample data. So there's just gibberish in here. Um, all I'm trying to capture is that, hey, this is a thing, right? So this would be a sensor reading or something like that. So this one has 57% confidence. This one has 71% confidence. So let's drill into that. So if I click on this, <clears throat> I can see here the annotations. And you'll recall, I said that there were going to be two coming off of Workstation 2 and then three coming off of Workstation 3. And the only ones that we're going to pass were going to be the PKI annotations. Let's see. 
I can get back to. Right. So if essentially what we were just looking at is this create and this transit and both of those PKI annotations passed. Now you might be saying, okay, well, there's five there and two passed. So shouldn't that be 40%? But the reason that it is, uh, what was it, 56%, 57%. The reason it's 57 is because the PKI uh, annotation just happens to be weighted more in the static policy that I'm using. So because there's more weight given to uh, the PKI annotation, that's why we have a higher level of confidence. So let's look at this one. This is the mutated piece of data. All right. So workstation three, we have, we have two here. We have TPM and PKI because when we do a mutation, obviously the data is being sourced on that box. So there's no reason to do a TLS evaluation. And following from that, we have the handoff to workstation four. And uh, you can see here that yes, the TLS handoff succeeded, the signature was validated and we signed the data going out, okay? So because of all of that, we now have the confidence score of 71%. Again, remember the PKI annotations are weighted higher. So what you see here then is the Alvarium database, which is everything that goes into supporting this one column and then the application database, which is all of these other uh, fields. So in this way, we can provide a dashboard to show how the level of confidence is measured against every piece of data in the database that you're interested in. <clears throat> so functionally, that's the demo. But what I'd like to do is just very quickly show you how the SDK is used. So from a Go perspective, in your Go mod, you would import the uh, SDK Go, the Alvarium SDK Go. We have a logging provider as well. That's a very slim dependency. It doesn't import any external packages. And then let's look at the creator. <clears throat> and so, like I said, I generate a piece of sample data and then I store it in, uh, store it in the database. This is uh, Mongo sitting behind that. And then here's where it gets marshaled, right? So it's marshaled into bytes, and then we hand it to the SDK and say, okay, create. Now, when the application was bootstrapped, in the configuration, there's a series of uh, settings for the SDK, and I can tell it, you know, which annotators to use, what algorithm to use for a hash, if there's a signature involved, you know, you don't have to use keys on the file system. Obviously, you can get those from other places, but for the purpose of the demo, that's what I did. And then here's where I configured the stream. And this provider is essentially the author console that I was telling you about before. And the tangle is the node in the tangle that I'm going to be writing to. So for purposes of the demo, I'm not writing to the coordinator. I'm actually writing to the secondary node. Um, and then the two of them sync up. And so then going back to the main, I read all of that out of configuration. You can see right here, I'm going after the annotators node within the SDK config. There's a factory that allows me to get the instances of the annotators, which I then pass into a constructor for the SDK. And then that SDK is fed to what I call the worker, which does the actual work of creating the data. And then down in here, whoops, that's the wrong worker. <clears throat> down in here, that's why I'm able to call create. And then this is where I pass it off to uh, the next hop in the chain. Um, one other thing that I would like to just describe is in our repo for the SDK, we actually do have some documentation around how you can use this. So the SDK interface itself is very, very simple. You construct it, and then you call create, mutate, or transit. You know, whatever is happening to the data. Um, one thing that's interesting about mutate, which I don't have the ability, unfortunately, to show as part of this demo, is we're working on the concept of lineage for data. So recall that I said you create the data on workstation two, it gets passed to workstation three, and then somehow it's filtered or transformed. We call that a mutation. And 
we have a pointer from that mutated document to the original document. Both of those documents are being written to the application database. And we within the Alvarium database have the ability to track that that mutation happened. So eventually what you could do is write a visualizer that says for a given document, show me not only the confidence for this target document, but all of its former revisions. And then you could have a history of all the machines and all the different checks that went into creating this entire lineage of data, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I think that's probably it. Let me wrap up here real fast. Just a, a, a few pieces of information in case you'd like to know more. Um, so our official GitHub organization is right there, project Alvarium on github.com. We have a few different repos that we're actively working on, the Go SDK. I always work, I work a lot on that. We also have an example application that uh, it, it's, it's a single process application, but it leverages some uh, some of the Go concurrency primitives like Go routines and channels and things like that <clears throat> to demonstrate each one of the SDK methods in a sequence. Um, so take a look at that. That's pretty interesting. And then we're doing the same thing for Java because we have some use cases, some internal customers who are interested in having this capability with the Java SDK. But we're certainly open to porting the SDK to additional languages. Um, and so if you'd like to be a contributor in that regard, certainly like to have that discussion. On Twitter, we have an account, Project Alvarium, where you can find various announcements and things like that. And then the resources that I'm using in this demo, I have under my personal uh, account in GitHub. Uh, they're public repos, of course. And you can see there, uh, the ONES demo 2021 has the services that I deployed to Workstation 2, 3, and 4. And as well as an example stream subscriber. And that shows you how to subscribe to the IOTA Tangle and pull a message out. Um, one thing I'll say is that the IOTA Tangle, or I should say the stream provider, we use a C bindings library that the IOTA Foundation provided in order to have interop uh, with the Tangle. Uh, everything IOTA does is, is written in Rust. And so in order to have some integration there, we need some C binding so that we can go back and forth between Go. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this talk. I hope you found it informative. I hope it sparks your interest in the project. And, you know, would love to hear from you if you're interested in contributing to the project. Thank you very much.